Um, how much information do you have about the finances of the president-elect, his family, or Trump-related organizations? I don't have any of that information, Senator. So I take it that you won't have any way of knowing when asked by the president to take official action in your capacity as secretary, how those actions might ha affect his personal financial situation. I'm not sure I could comment on that. And this isn't theoretical. He owns a university. I think it's relevant to assessing the wisdom of an education policy proposal to know how that proposal might affect the president's personal finances. Do you disagree with me? Well, I think the president-elect has uh, taken steps to ensure. Can, can I ask? That do, you, do you disagree with me? Is is it? Can you ask, can you state your question yep. again? I think it's relevant to assessing the wisdom of an education policy proposal to know how the proposal might affect the president's personal finances. Do you disagree with me? Um, I don't disagree with you. Okay, thank you. The nation deserves a Secretary of Education who's a champion of kids, parents, state and local control, and outcomes. And I also think the nation deserves a Secretary who's a champion of public education. In a 2015 speech on education, you were pretty blunt, quote, government really sucks. And you called the public school system a, quote, dead end. In order to clarify, you never attended a public school, K-12 school, did you? Correct. And your children did not either, correct? That's correct. And you've never taught at a K-12 public school, correct? I'm not. Do you think that schools that receive, K-12 schools that receive government funding should meet the same accountability standards, outcome standards? I, all schools that receive public funding should be accountable, yes. Should, should meet the same accountability standards? Yes, although you have different accountability standards well, between traditional traditional public schools and charter schools. But I'm, but I, but I'm really interested in this. Okay, should everybody well, be on a level playing field? So public, public charter or private K-12 schools, if they receive taxpayer funding, they should meet the same accountability standards. Yes, they should be very transparent with the information and parents should have that information first and foremost. And if confirmed, will you insist upon that equal accountability in any K-12 school or educational program that receives federal funding, whether public, public charter, or private? I support accountability. Equal accountability for all schools that receive federal funding. I support accountability. Okay, is that a yes or a no? That's a, I support accountability. Do you not want to answer my question? I'm Leanne Beard, and we are here protesting the uh, nomination of Betsy DeVos to the Senate, uh, the Senate Committee for Trump's Cabinet as uh, Secretary of Education. And Betsy DeVos has no qualifications, and not only that, she doesn't even believe in public schools. We find it outrageous that Senator Cornyn would betray our country so badly by voting in a woman who wants to destroy our education system. She herself has never spent a day in public school. She herself, say that again. she herself has never spent a day in public school. So please join with us on Facebook at the page Say no to Betsy DeVos. Post your picture, post your comment that you're protesting in your zip code. Notify people around the state. This is a statewide protest. We want Senator Cornyn to sit up and take notice. He's been very nice about listening, but he is not thinking. I support accountability. Okay, let me ask you this. I think all schools that receive taxpayer funding should be equally accountable. Do you agree with me or not? Well, they don't. They're not today. I, but I think they should. Do you agree with me or not? Well, no, because... You they, don't agree with me. Let me move to my next question. Should all K-12 schools receiving governmental funding be required to meet the requirements of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act? I think they already are. Okay, so... So, but, but I'm asking you a should question, whether, whether they are or not, we'll get into that later. Should all schools that receive if, if schools taxpayer funding be required to meet the uh, requirements of the individuals with disabilities in education? I think that is a matter that's best left to the states. So states might, some states might be good to kids with disabilities and other states might not be so good and then what, people could just move around the country if they don't like other kids are being treated? I think that's an issue that's best left to the states. What about the federal requirement? It's a federal law, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Let's limit it to federal funding. If schools receive federal funding, should they be required to follow federal law, whether they're public, public charter, or private? As the senator referred to... Um, Just yes or no? I've only got Florida, one more question. Florida, 
program. Uh, there's many parents that are very happy with the program there. I th and let me state this. I think all schools that receive federal funding, public, public charter, or private, should be required to meet the conditions of the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act. Do you agree with me or not? I think that is certainly worth discussion, and I would look forward to So you to cannot yet agree further. with me. And finally, should all K-12 schools receiving governmental funding be required to report the same information regarding instances of harassment, discipline, or bullying if they receive federal funding? I think that federal funding certainly comes with strings attached. I think all such schools should be required to report equally information about discipline, harassment, or bullying. Do you agree with me or not? I would look forward to reviewing that provision. If it was a court, I would uh, say to the court, let the uh, judge instruct the witness to answer the question. It's not a court. You're not under oath or you're not under a subpoena, but you're trying to win my vote. What are you doing here? Speak up, uh, please, because it's loud over here. Oh, okay. Um, I'm here to uh, protest a boss, and I'm here for public schools, and we need all the public schools we can get. They need to be strong. We don't need to take money from them to pay for charter schools and online schools and that kind of thing. So anyway, we need to uh, have accountability for these charter schools. That's what we need. Because if they're not accountable, then why are we accountable to the, to the, public, the public schools? If they're going to take the ETF money, then they should be accountable. President-elect Trump's experience with higher education was to create a fake university, which resulted in his paying a $25 million to students that he cheated. So I'm curious about how the Trump administration would protect against waste, fraud, and abuse at similar for-profit colleges. So here's my question. How do you plan to protect taxpayer dollars from waste, fraud, and abuse by colleges that take in millions of dollars in federal student aid? Senator, um, if confirmed, I will certainly be very vigilant. Yeah, and I'm asking people, how. I, the, the, the how are you going to do that? You said you're committed. The individuals with whom I work in the department will ensure that federal monies are used properly and appropriately, and I will look forward to working so, with so you. So you're going to subcontract making sure that what happened with uh, universities that cheat students doesn't happen anymore? No, I didn't uh, say You're going to give that to someone else to do? I just want to know what your ideas are for making sure we don't have problems with waste, fraud, and abuse. I, I want to make sure we don't have problems with that as well. And well, if confirmed, I will work diligently to ensure that we are addressing any of those issues. Well, let me make a suggestion on this. It actually turns out that there are a whole group of rules that are already written and are there, and all you have to do is enforce them. So what I want to know is, will you commit to enforcing these rules to ensure that no career college receives federal funds unless they can prove that they are actually preparing their students for gainful employment and not cheating them? Senator, I will commit to ensuring that institutions which receive federal funds are actually serving their students well. And, and so you will enforce the gainful employment rule to make sure that these career colleges are not cheating students? Uh, we will certainly review that rule. You'll and review see it? That, you and, will not and commit to enforce it, it? And see that it is uh, actually achieving what the, in, the intentions are. I, I don't understand about reviewing it. We talked about this in my office there are already rules in place to stop waste, fraud, and abuse, and I don't understand how you can not be sure about enforcing them. You know, swindlers and crooks are out there doing backflips when they hear an answer like this. If confirmed, you will be the cop on the beat, and if you can't commit to use the tools that are already available to you in the Department of Education, then I don't see how you can be the secretary of education. Okay, I'm here to urge Senator Cornyn to vote no on Betsy DeVos because she is absolutely not qualified to be our education secretary. She is someone who is totally against public schools and I'm sure that she will work to destroy public schools. So we need someone else who has real experience and really wants to help our education. Thank you.
sir. And this is, uh, brings me to the issue of, of proficiency, which the uh, senator uh, uh, cited, versus growth. And I would like your, your views on uh, the relative advantage of measuring, uh, doing assessments and using them to measure proficiency or to measure, measure growth. Thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I think if, if I'm understanding your question correctly around proficiency, I would, I would also um, correlate it to competency and mastery so that you, each student is measured according to the um, advancement that they're making in each subject area. Well, that's growth. A, at, at, that's not proficiency. So in other words, the growth they're making is in growth. The proficiency is if an arbitrary reached, if standard. If they've reached a level, the proficiency is if they've reached a, a like third grade level for reading, et cetera. Is no, I'm talking about the debate between proficiency and growth and yes. what, what your thoughts are on them. Well, I was just asking to clarify then. Well, this, well, is, this is a subject that is has been debated in the education community for years. In and I've, I've advocated growth as the chairman and every member of this committee knows because with proficiency, uh, teachers uh, ignore the kids at the top mm -hmm. who are not going to fall below proficiency and they ignore the kid at the bottom who no matter what they do will never get to proficiency. So I've been an advocate of growth. But it surprises me that you don't know this issue. Would you like to uh, express why you're here on video? This young lady left her. Just remember, you're talking to deaf people. It's a really loud place here. I'm here just because I believe that Betsy DeVos is going to be for our education system. I don't think she has any um, insight because she didn't go to public school, her children didn't go to public school, and I think she basically seems to have no intellectual capacity. She doesn't understand our system, and I don't think she'll help our children. Uh, Ms. DeVos, many of my Democratic colleagues have pointed out your lack of experience in K-12 public schools. But I'd like to ask you about your qualifications for leading the nation on higher education. The Department of Education is in charge of making sure that the $150 billion that we invest in students each year gets into the right hands and that students have the support they need to be able to pay back their student loans. The Secretary of Education is essentially responsible for managing a trillion dollar student loan bank and distributing $30 billion in Pell Grants to students each year. The financial futures of an entire generation of young people depend on your department getting that right. Now, Mrs. DeVos, do you have any direct experience in running a bank? Senator, I do not. Uh-huh. Do you have you ever managed or overseen a trillion dollar loan program? I have not. How about a billion dollar loan program? I have not. Okay, so no experience in managing a program like this. How about participating in one? I think it's important for the person who is in charge of our financial aid programs to understand what it's like for students and their families who are struggling to pay for college. Mrs. DeVos, have you ever taken out a student loan from the federal government to help pay for college? I have not. Uh, have any of your children had to borrow money in order to go to college? They have been fortunate not to. Uh-huh. Have you had any personal experience with a Pell Grant? Uh, not personal experience, but certainly friends and um, students with whom I've worked. So you have, have no personal experience with college financial aid or management of higher education. Would you like to be on video so while you're here? Sure. Yeah. All right. It is really, really loud here. Everybody on video complains they can't hear anything. So you're talking to deaf people right now. Okay. Would you agree with me that if there is a mom watching this hearing who makes $30,000, $40,000 a year, single mom perhaps, 
who has to pay ten or fifteen thousand dollars a year for childcare for her daughter, that that is a burden that is almost impossible uh, to deal with. Would what are your proposals about making childcare universal uh, for our working families? Do you have ideas on that? Do you agree with that idea? Uh, that that certainly is a burden, and while and I I can understand the uh, challenge that that family that young mother would face in deciding how to best serve her child's needs. Again, I think if we're talking about the future of that child and their education, I would look forward to working with you. I know we have common ground on a lot of things, and we could find ways to work together to ensure that that young mom's child will have a great opportunity for a great education in the future. There are countries around the world which do provide universal, very inexpensive or free childcare. Would you work with me in moving our government in that direction? Senator, again, I, I feel very strongly about the importance of young families having an opportunity for good child care for their children. Um, I'm not sure that But it's that's not a question of, of an opportunity. Department. It's a question of being able to, very often my Republican friends talk about opportunity. But it's not a question of opportunity. It's a question of being able to afford it. How do we help somebody who's making eight or nine bucks an hour at a time when we can't raise the minimum wage here because of Republican opposition? How do we make sure that those moms can get quality child care that they can afford? Well, I would look forward to helping that mom get quality, a quality education for their child or their children so that they could look forward to a bright and hopeful future. Well, well, it, is, the, is the Devo hat for DeVos? Not a loud voice. <laughs> funny. Devo says no DeVos. Honey, <laughs> over here, just remember, it's loud. Be loud. <laughs> You're going to have to get close. I'm addressing John Gordon, I assume. You, well, this is going to go out. I've got 144,000 subscribers to my YouTube channel. Okay. So that's who it's addressing. Who are you with? Okay. What? Who are you with on your YouTube channel? I'm president of Atheist Alliance of America. My wife and I are both education advocates. We run a science channel called Living Science Lessons, where we do classroom supplement videos teaching biology to middle school and high school students. And a lot of atheist activism. Woo! In terms of throwing numbers around, you said that uh, student debt has increased by a thousand percent since 980 percent in eight years. I'm sorry. 980 percent. That's not. That's, that's just not so. It's increased 118 percent in the past eight mm. years. Well. So I'm, I'm, I'm just asking if you're challenging my figures, I would ask that you get your figures straight. So you, uh, you came out here to protest the nomination of Betsy DeVos? Yeah, I, I came to let Senator Cornyn know he's got to vote no on her for the Monday vote. I hear he's one of the senators that's like waffling back and forth to, to vote yes or no, and he's got to vote no on her. Yeah. To what? She's absolutely completely unqualified, and basically she wants to destroy our public education system, which is extremely dangerous. I'm seeing something of a pattern here with all of the Trump appointees who seem to be the very person selected, the very fox selected to guard the hen house right. in each case. Exactly. Yesterday I saw on CNN that Trump was saying that military action is not off the table with Iran. So within two weeks of being president, we're talking about military action against Iran. All right. Bannon is talking about a war in the South China Sea. Well, we know the Chinese are militarizing the South China Sea. It would be real easy to get into a war with China over the South China Sea if we wanted to. It's like a political blitzkrieg. This is what's happening. It's like every day you're bombarded, you're bombarded, you're executive order, executive order. What 
she does, rather than speak out in this sort of fashion the way we do, she calls embassies to apologize for what our leadership is doing. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> and they appreciate it too. They really do. They all thank I don't doubt that. Thank you for doing what you do. You're welcome. I'd like to say something, but I can't help her shouting. Okay, well, let's turn around so we get the sun in the right place. Okay. Okay, you will have to speak loud. Okay. I'm here because A, Cornyn doesn't answer his damn phone, and now that it's Cruz, so I actually went up there to talk to a staff member, and it was incredibly unproductive, and potentially I may have been lied to. But anyways, um, I'm here because education is a, is a right and, and not a privilege. And my concern with uh, DeVos is that she has spent billions of dollars, well millions at least, trying to gut our public education system. Um, you should have the right to a quality education regardless of your financial status and regardless of your religious preference or affiliation. And that's the whole point of our public school system. So I think she is a threat to this country and I think putting her as the uh, Secretary of Education is actually, it, it, it's a threat to this nation. I'm here because I am frankly scared about what's going on in our government right now. Um, Trump is really, uh, I don't feel Trump is the one that's leading our country. It's everyone else that he's brought in. Steve Bannon in particular is a self-proclaimed Leninist. And this is in an interview. And his goal is to, in quotes, government, and apparently that's what he's doing right now. Uh, Betsy DeVos, I've watched her interviews. She is wholly unqualified to improve. The goal is to improve our public schools. She knows nothing about public schools and in fact wants to, to uh, increase charter schools and private schools and take away funding, I'm assuming, from our public schools. That is not going to help America. We need to increase funding for our public schools. Some of us believe that we should make public colleges and universities tuition free so that every young person in this country, regardless of income, does have that option. That's not the case today. Will you work with me and others to make public colleges and universities tuition free through federal and state efforts? Well, Senator, I think that's a really interesting idea. And it's really great to consider and think about, but I think we also have to consider the fact that there's nothing in life that's truly free. Somebody's going to pay for it, oh, and so... Oh, yes, you're right. And you're so right. Somebody would, will pay for it, but that takes us to another issue. I think... And if, that is, if I may, yeah. and that is right now we have proposals in front of us to substantially lower tax breaks for billionaires in this country while at the same time low-income kids can't afford to go to college. Do you think that makes sense? Senator, I think if, if your question is really around how can we help college and higher education be more affordable for young people as they anticipate Actually, that it. wasn't my question. My question is, should we make public colleges and universities tuition-free so that every family in America, regardless of income, will have the ability to have their kids get a higher education. That was my question. Senator, I think, I think we, we can work together and we could work hard on making sure that college or higher education in some form is affordable for all young people that want to pursue it. And I would look forward to that opportunity. All right, so we, we went upstairs and we, of course, didn't speak to the senator himself, but we spoke to a representative. And we conveyed our case as best we could while they took notes and took down our zip code and all like that. So I guess the secret police can come get us later. How did it go for you? Um, you know, they were very polite. They were actually um, more open to us than the last time that I was here, which was nice. They had a different young man answering, you know, answering our questions and so forth. Um, but, you know, it just concerns me, and I think it's really scary, in fact, as an American try to get in touch with people on the common lines, which includes the White House, you know, our senators, White House, and have it, I mean, yesterday I actually tried to call uh, Senator Cornyn and it said, please stay on the line, you know, such and such, and then it just shut down, it just shut off, and there wasn't anything. So... I, I called both Cornyn and Cruz, both offices in Dallas and Washington, uh, a dozen times each. Really? 
Did it shut down? Yep. Yeah. So I don't know what that is. Yeah, there was no voice from that no, no So that's a little bit scary to me. I feel like as Americans, you know, even though we are not, uh, we are, you know, maybe they don't deem us important because we're not part of the party. We are in the opposing party. And so therefore maybe because they know that we are the ones that are calling, maybe it's not important enough to man, to staff, to such an extent that, that the phone calls can be answered. But frankly, um, nonetheless, our tax money is going to these people. Um, they still have to represent us, whether they like us or not. And I find it to be very disheartening to have that happen. Have we gotten any, has anybody gotten any feedback on, on what the, the Democratic senators are doing? Because I was, I was alarmed at the number of Democrats that have already approved Trump nominations. That made I no sense to me. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. I have nothing to say on that. It is a mind boggling to me. How did you do? Yeah, yeah, I also called and asked that he be impeached. Well, we see to that too. Yeah. Well, that's a scary thing. And um, frankly, I think rather than Steve Bannon said that he wants to tire us out, and I think actually what's going to happen is it's going to continue to unite us. It's going to continue to energize us. I am not going to be tired out. I'm working on it as my third job. I already have two jobs. I look on this as my third job. I read every day. I read Facebook postings. I read the news that comes um, on my phone. It is very important to me to stay up on things. I am willing to protest. I'm willing to. I went to the Women's March on Washington. So mm -hmm. I am not being tired out. And neither of you. I see this escalating. In fact, I do too. Uh, sadly, I, and I remember that we've had these impeachment proceedings with Nixon, and it didn't seem to go very uh, go anywhere with. Uh, Clinton, but look at those, those were the precedents. We didn't have somebody that was facing you know, four out of ten people in the population want to impeach him in the first fortnight of his office. Well, not to well, mention all the international disasters that have happened now with him hanging up on, mm -hmm. on, on people and, and you know, threatening with Iran and that sort of thing. I mean, what exactly is the, is the plan here? He complained about the deal with Iran and where we returned billions of their own money and froze it. But then a uh, week into what he's in office, he's already wasted that effort and, and the, 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 their testing muscles. So we have them agreeing to not uh, go looking for the government. And he wasted all of that money and uh, time that people put into stopping to, yeah. to renew his cost of Well, so. I, I consider myself to be a pretty reasonable person, and I'm scared. I'm really scared. And I don't. You know, I have never followed politics in my life. I've always felt like America was sensible, reasonable, that those people would prevail. And I don't feel like that right now. I feel scared. Yeah, I'm not there with you. So that's sad to me. I wanted to take this opportunity on film to tell you that Senator Cornyn's office has genuinely been trying to work with progressives. They have made an effort to see us and to hear us, and I'm confident that he's actually counting what his constituents are reporting to him that they're feeling. I don't think that enough of us yet have appeared at his doorstep or emailed him or phone calls, and between now and Monday, this is a major problem. So we are doing, because they're not going to have time to count it, even if the if they had unlimited number of phone lines. So we are doing an alternate Facebook campaign to show Senator Cornyn how many of us there are. Please go to Say No to Betsy DeVos Cornyn on your Facebook and you'll find the page and post your picture with your sign if you like. They say no to Betsy DeVos, variation of your sign. Be sure to include in the caption your zip code and your occupation. We want him to know how many of us there are and how far what widespread it is. For this to make a difference between now and Monday, not only must you do this yourself, you must 
transmit to your friends, person to person, how important it is, and make sure that two or three of your friends do the same and report back to you that they did, and get them to do that for their friends, because until we go three or four people deep, we will not reach our goal of 10,000 by Sunday night. If everybody keeps passing it on and we keep turning up on the Facebook page, we will reach 10,000 and I am confident that will make an impact. So I wanted to make a, a, a special point of telling you that we have been working with Cornyn's office at Liberty Tree Action and we have access to their backline appointments. So if you have a group and you want to take your group of nine or fewer people, they will make an appointment so that you be sure and get in. It's not that they're trying to restrict access, it's that they're trying to be available. And how you can get in touch with me to, to be that go-between is you can go to Liberty Tree Action Facebook group, join the group, and message me and send a message through Liberty Tree and I will get it and I will get back in touch with you. Thanks. There is a groundswell of support and organization that's happening across Texas, you know, to challenge the Trump, you know, the Trump agenda and, and what he's trying to do. Do you have anything to say? I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm like, you're on the spot. Okay. I have a question. Yes. I'd like to know what you all think the Trump agenda is. <laughs> he, he's got so many things on his agenda. He wants to get, obviously, he's not for public schools. He's for privatizing everything. He is not for working with the rest of the world. He just wants to be the king in charge and make his own decisions. We want to. We want our voices heard. Mm. Can I say something about this? Yeah. Okay. Here, I'm gonna stop this. Let's film each okay. other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what's going on? Okay. I watched this documentary about Putin about two years ago. It was put on by a PBS. And this um, woman said, you need to look at Russia not as a democracy in the process of failing, but as an authoritarian state in the process of succeeding. That's how you need to view it. And then when Trump was elected and all the steps that are happening, right, all these executive orders, the fact that for two days the judicial branch was not on the White House website, these aren't these aren't the accidents. These, these are very intelligent people. The fact that he doesn't feel like he has to comply with court orders. Well, if you're not going to comply with a district court order, which, by the way, is binding on federal agencies, why would you comply with the Supreme Court? Our system is based on voluntary compliance. So when watching all this happen, I was like, oh my god. This isn't a democracy in the process of failing so much as it might be an authoritarian state in the process of succeeding. And people say, I'm melodramatic. I'm not melodramatic. I'm fucking awake and observant, and I see what's happening, and I see these pieces being moved. And the reason we come out here to protest is because you, the only way to protect these rights is to exercise these rights. If you're going to take my rights away from me, it's not going to happen while I'm not paying attention. It's going to happen while I'm out here fucking doing it.